Hi, I'm Johnny Barfus. With me is Kelly Ashton. We both work for here for Handy Quilter. Today, we are going to be talking about quilting the dream big panel. So, Kelly, I've had this, I started this over a year oh, ago. Oh, I remember when you started it, Johnny. And it's really time to get it done. Yeah. And you are such an expert of the dream big panel. We're just going to say that. Okay. There's one behind us that you quilted. This is what I'm working on. So, I've already gone through and outlined all the petals on this. And I did one echo, but you're going to show me how you like to do the echoing in to give it a little channel, right? Yeah. So okay. we're going to show you actually some tools that yes, kind of make the process you. a little bit easier. So I especially right. wanted to use rulers because okay. I'm not confident in my free motion skills. What a great place to practice and right. get better, right? Yes. So we're going to use rulers. Okay. Right? Yes. And we have a gold Magnifico shiny thread. So we did want to mention that we turned our stitch length to 10. So that's a longer stitch length, right? Yeah. To maybe show off that it's, shiny it's thread. It's not really long, but it's, it's right. we didn't want it tiny because we want that shiny thread to be able to sit on top of the fabric and, and sparkle. And sparkle like Magnifico yeah. does. That's why yeah. I like it. Yeah, okay, so tell me what we're gonna do first. Okay, so we're gonna just work on echoing these petals because I really feel like it's important to leave a gap of unquilted space. If mm -hmm. you want to look at the, the petals behind us, this helps when you leave a place that's not quilted, uh -huh. it really helps the shape of that petal stand out. And okay. what are we going for with this Dream Big, right? We, we want it to be a flower. We want the petals to stand out. Yes. So if you leave a place, and I did kind of a, a double echo, you but I filled a in the second echo. one. Yeah, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna do one. Kayla's here, showing so Kayla. that. So right here is what she's talking about. So she, we have one echo, and then you did a second echo that you went in and did a curly circle cue, a curly cue. Yes. And filled in that that little channel there. Yes, because there's dense quilting here and dense, fairly dense quilting on each side of it. It uh -huh. allows that unquilted space to pop out and really lets the shape of the petal shine. Right. Okay. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? Ah, oh, I just love it. So you've done a couple of them, but we need to do some more. So I'm yes. going to show you some tools that helped me to make it a lot easier. Right. Okay? And I know you want to work with rulers, so we're going to work on rulers. I love it. So when I first started doing the Dream Big panels, and I and I was echoing them, what I did is I put my ruler base on, mm -hmm. and then I just rested my hand on that, and I free motioned around these petals. That's kind of what I did. Okay. But then I, I decided I wanted to try using rulers, and I okay. got a lot more precise in my echoing. So I'm going to show you how I did it with the rulers, so that you can do that yourself. Okay, pull up oh, our thread. It's a lovely color bobbin on there. Yeah, <laughs> we want to make sure that. Okay, all right. And two of my favorite rulers to do this were the um, curved cross hatch and the flip side template. And it's because both of these rulers have a concave mm -hmm. and a convex arc. So I can flip them on both sides and stay pretty consistent with my shape. So I do love that one that you have. Which one is that again? The this is the um, curved cross hatch. Curved cross hatch. Yeah. So it does not fit the shape of the pedal exactly. Mm -hmm. So what I have to do, I don't have handy grip on here. I'm just going to stitch a little ways and then I'm going to adjust my ruler and I, so I only do a couple of inches at a time mm -hmm. because I just have to keep making an adjustment and see this one gives me a, an inside curve right there so I can switch it around and do it that way and this one oh you just freehanded it oh I might have just for a hair right there okay and then I'm going to flip it to this side see when you're using rulers you really have to to sometimes hold them in, in strange positions, but uh -huh. they work really well for you if you just learn how to um, flip them around. And, and I'm using, I'll show you here in just a second, this ruler has a um, arched, or I'm sorry, etched, uh -huh. an etched line on that arch. And, let's it's, and it's a fourth of an inch away from the edge of the ruler. Uh -huh. Let's show them on this uh, camera here, show them that, that etching, if okay. that will show up. I think that will put right it show there. up. Does that show up there, Kayla? So you can see the edge Not line is, is in okay. a fourth of an inch. 
If you have a ruler, you know what I'm talking about. It's got the etching on the back. Right. And whenever you're using the, ex the etching as a guide, you want to make sure that the etch is down towards your fabric. So I want to be able to read handy gadgets or her curve crosshatch. I want to mm -hmm. be able to read that if I'm using the, any of the guidelines as a measuring tool. Right. Okay. And because that line is at a fourth of an inch mm -hmm. and my foot is a half an inch round, so that makes the needle a fourth of an inch away from each side. Right. If I put this etched line on my stitching, mm -hmm. it actually gives me a half inch channel. Okay. It's not perfect, so you know, be kind to yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you've still got some echoing to do on this quilt to be able to right. separate those. Right. I can definitely practice some of that echoing. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, either of those rulers worked super well for me because I liked the concave and the convex. I liked having both options. Right. On the okay. same ruler, I like that. But I know that you've been wanting to do a curved crosshatch. Yes. Right. Mm hmm. So. Let's talk about how we're going to do the curved cross hatch in this pedal. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I didn't cut the thread for you. Do I'm you just going to cut it really quick. Okay. I didn't pull, I didn't give myself some slack. We're trying to teach people to do that. Yes. And move it away just a little further. There you go. So you got a long bobbin <laughs> tail. I know. Okay. So we did, people can see probably on the camera that line, but we're going to show why we did that, those lines there on that pedal, right? Right. So. First, we kind of found the center of where we want to do our curved cross hatch, right? And yes. you said, let's do a, make it just to make a plus. Okay. And right? what, tell me about the marking tool you're using. This is the erasable fabric marker. It's the air erase, the air we erasable. call it. Uh -huh. Because I've used this before on several things. I just love that it just kind of disappears after a day. Right, in Utah, Especially, because oh. we don't have any humidity, right. the air dissolving air air pen, uh -huh. disappearing pen, will it'll last a couple of hours. If you're in some place it's hum humid, uh -huh. because water also helps it rapidly disappear, it may not be there long enough for you to use it for this. So you may have to choose a different marker. Oh, water it. helps it dissolve yes, fat? Yes, it does. Oh, I didn't know so that. So if we're finished and it's still there, we could just spritz it with some water, Oops. and and that line will disappear even quicker. Yeah. So, so, so it works really well here. It may not be your marking tool of choice if you're in a humid area, but you could use, we could have used like a chalk pencil. Uh huh. I like white chalk. That works well as a marking tool. I well. love, I love this one just because it seems to always go away. I haven't yeah. had a problem with it reoccurring yeah. or reappearing. It's important that you test it, right? So we are showing using this arc A template, our arc set. Okay. Right? Yes. And, and I want to point out that you could use either of these two rulers as well. Yes. But I like the Arc A set because it has five different rulers in it that gives you ten different arcs. Yeah. So this is number one, A1. So if you've been enjoying watching Johnny and Kelly create this wonderful Dream Big panel, you can do the same thing with our Arc A set. It comes with five different rulers and it's on sale 15% off through Sunday. Should have got the some arc, black. The Arc A, that's the biggest. That's the biggest the one biggest in the set. One. So have one here that's like a lower uh, profile, and this one is a higher profile on that end, right? Yes. So you pointed out that if I use this um, line, registration line, as a, and the center point as my guide, right? Yes. So I'm, I have this ruler here. Gonna try to show it on the camera better. Should I start on this end or this end? Yes. Start, start down here. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna start down at the bottom. Start at the bottom of the arc. So I'm gonna extend my line a little bit. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Because that's a, uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna extend this line. Because you have the ruler base, it's nice to kind of slide that under. I know. Marking. I should have. Uh, thank keeps, you. It keeps it really straight. It didn't. Yeah. It's okay. It's good. You'll be fine. So you're using that straight line. Mm -hmm. You're using the straight line in the center of the arc as your as your guides. So you're just setting the center right on that center line. Should I start right here yeah. at the corner? Sure. Well, let's see. Yeah, that would be a good place right there. Perfect. Let's start at the very beginning. Do you know that song? 
It's from Sound of Music. Sure, I know the Sound of Music. <laughs> but you don't know my singing of it? Your singing is beautiful, Johnny, <laughs> but uh, I wasn't prepared for that. You weren't prepared to hear I a song? I wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know what's going to happen, right? I know, that's right. That's the beauty of live television. Keeps me smiling, that's for sure. Okay, I'm going to do this echoing inside of that pedal. In, oh yeah, okay, inside of your echo, right? Yes, so in the middle of the pedal. And you'll just stop when you get to that echo. Okay, and then do I just move it like freehand along that stitch line? Well, you actually have the ruler that you can help guide you. If you just hold it against you, it'll, it doesn't, even though it's not the right shape, it'll right. kind of help you stabilize it as you, how far apart are we doing this curved cross edge? Well, we talked about a half inch. Well, we were going to use the half inch mark that would make it three fourths of an inch. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Uh huh. Okay. So, so go a little further. Yes. Okay. Oh. Even go farther. Get that straight line on there, and you're going to go till your half inch line is on. The half inch line needs to be on the last stitched. Okay. Okay. So can Stitch you? Mark. That's perfect. That's right where I want you. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if they can see that on the camera. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. So this is the this is where I had it. Then I stitched that line. We already talked about the quarter inch of our foot, uh -huh. right? And then I'm making this dotted line the next one up. Yeah, so in the center of your ruler, you're using the half inch mark. Yes. Because with curved cross hatch, you often get just a little bit different angle. So by just using the center as your measuring guide, it, it keeps it fairly consistent. I love that. And then, yeah, you can use the ruler or you oh. can just put some pressure on the ruler base and that gives you a little more stability as well. Okay, so I need to go a little further. So, right? A little bit more, yep. You want that now a little bit too far, so you want oh. it right there. So just come back a I'm couple Come back stitches. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Once again, we're lining up the center drawn line is on the center line of the ruler and then he's moving it until the last stitching ends up at about a half an inch away and so our curved cross is, is going to be three-fourths of an inch our little boxes yeah okay there's oh man keep it on the straight there you go You're right. yeah it's looking good Kayla can work her magic and show them this in fast speed. And you can show them how fast you quilt. Will you do that, Kayla? She nodded yes, I think, so. I don't know, people might appreciate our witty bander. Or my singing. It's possible. And it's possible they might not. <laughs> that was a very diplomatic way of saying that. I did want to say. You're doing good with rulers. Good. Thanks. I, so people talk about, we had just had our retailers here last week, our new retailers. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about rulers. And I really like the precision that I can get with a ruler. I, I think that's what I love about it too. Like, I, I don't want to always, um, center lined up yeah okay. if there's something that like is not in pro stitcher or not like I had a quill they did a few a couple years ago last year two years ago I don't know when it was so it's gonna get tricky because that's we're going kind yeah, of backwards you're, you're backwards so you probably have to hit that point and go up a little bit okay like so yeah let's see yeah you're just a hair. But I um I wanted a design, I wanted a quilting design that um would accentuate my piecing, but that if I I couldn't really accomplish it with Pro Stitcher because it would take way too long to program, you know? Okay. And I wanted a more precise than I could get with the free motion with this free hand. Ooh, that's looking so cool. I'm kind of loving it. Just kind of? Actually, I'm really loving it. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so 
about oh, this far going to go. Oh, dear. Did it feel okay? You just broke your thread. Oh, no, it didn't. It just, it's fine. Yep. Thread did something. Oh, All right. It did it break? No, it didn't. So just cut your thread because then you'll want to cut it and come back over here to do that. Other We're going to do the next line, right? right? Yeah. Moving it away, grabbing your thread. Oh, yeah. I move it further away. Come back. It's funny when we had people here, I was telling them, okay, move it further. But here I am not moving it very far. Yeah, and this second time you move it, how far do you move it? Five to six inches. Yeah, why? Because I want to give myself a tail <gasps> on my bobbin. To be able to pull up so the bobbin tail next time. So then I pull my bobbin up next time. Yeah. Okay, so so on this one, okay, so this should we way. go this way or the other way? Uh, which is going to be easier for you? It's probably easier to hold the ruler. Than I think this way. way. Okay, then go that way. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to extend my line again. That's the nice thing about the curved cross hatch is you can kind of go. So I, I'm just extending my line. I'm bringing my ruler base over this time. There you go. It's it's makes a difference to have that it totally flat does. surface to draw against. So. Yeah. Well, a little bit more room. I think they can see that on the camera. Excellent. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing going back, right? Yep. Whoop. Should I do one right on the half inch? Oh, you want to start? It Should I start in a half thing. inch? Yeah. So I'm going to line that up kind of where I want to start. I'm going to do my needle up down, bring my bobbin up. Oh, man. That's already looking so good. Well, you could just leave it like that. If yeah, I wanted, could. you sure could. I want to do but it. But then you won't be able to show them how to do the cross hatch. I know. I want to fill it in. <laughs> so I kind of want to give this to a friend for her birthday because she loves orange. I don't think she watches our programming, so I think she. So it's safe. It will, yeah, I think it'll be safe. So I did the orange one for my mom. That was actually her choice. That's what you're saying. And it's really one of the favorite ones. Honestly, when I got the, the panels, the orange wasn't my favorite, but when I oh, finished yeah? it, it's just stunning. It's so beautiful. What colors of thread did you use? Did you I use all the gold. same? Oh, you did gold too? I did gold, yeah. Good choice. Great minds think alike. There's enough gold highlight in this orange that it just really sets off the colors. Yeah. Nice. I really just love the way the gold looks. I... Um, that log cabin quilt I just did, um, I did gold thread, and everyone's like, that wouldn't have been my first choice, but it, I think it, like the way it turned out. I definitely have gotten more creative in my color choices of thread than I used to be. Because of us? Probably. I'll give you the credit. Yeah, right. No. Well, when I first started quilting the Dream Big Panels, mm -hmm. I used all, like, 100 weight thread because I just wanted the texture. I didn't oh. want my thread to have big buildup. Right. But then I got kind of brave and, like, with this Ooh. panel. Oh, that's not. With this panel, I did um, lime green thread on the, the rainbow-colored panel and... I love it. I also did one with purple, the exact same. It's it's only a fourth of the panel. I cut it to just make little pillows or throws for my granddaughters. And I really like the contrasting color on there. So. Okay, back I, to cross hatching. How you I going? I love that one. We were just looking at that before we started, and I really love the way it looks. I have that rainbow one, too, somewhere. Just I bought two at the same time. You get to just um, choose your favorite color. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, now you're in a tricky spot because you yes. have to finish here and then you'll have to back, uh, stitch along here and do the other side. So right. It's okay. Could even. It's not stressful? No. Actually, just do these two and then move up here and finish those. I okay. Would, I would recommend that. It's fine. You just oh. didn't keep your center. You just want to keep this. Oh. You were close. You I got off a little bit. That's okay. Then you'll come back up and just finish. You might even just have one left right there, and you're done. I like it. Thanks. Okay, your one 
pedal closer to being finished? Uh, yes, definitely. Okay, I'm just gonna go. I'm just not gonna finish on the camera. Okay. I'm just gonna okay. show though what we just did, yeah, let's so they can give look. it. Oh, I like it. Is that a pretty good look, Kayla? All right. So one pedal down. How many are there in 52? Well, it depends on because <laughs> <laughs> there's actually, if you if you count all of them, there's more than 60. But some people just take the outer ones and make them a border rather right. than or raised rather than quilting them off. So okay. But at least one, 50. One down. 62 to go. <laughs> okay. Wait. Before we leave, we want um, Christina to jump in and show us about the ruler of the month that's happening this month. Okay. She'll awesome. show us the fun new ruler. So this month's ruler is called our pointed arc. It's a really fun ruler and so let me show you what you can do with this ruler. Let's go down here to the fabric. You can see that I've already stitched out some designs here. So let me just show you this first one. I'm going to move the machine a little bit out of the way so I can get the ruler there. I placed the ruler down and I just stitched right along the ruler. That's the, the basic shape of this ruler. I then went back and added a curve just to change it up a little bit. So that's a, an important thing with rulers is that you can mix and match rulers, you can embellish on what you've already quilted with your rulers, and you can see that on this one right here, I went back and did some scribble stitching in between. And you can see the difference in the look between these that are left plain and these that have the extra stitching. So play with these rulers and try different things. You can also, if you look between right here and right here, you can see a little bit of a difference in the shape of the actual design. This one, I went all the way from point to point. This one, I made it a little bit shorter. So if I had a shorter border, I could just make it fit in there. And it just changes how much open area is in the middle. So every border could be a little bit different. Okay, let's show you this design down here. This one, I only use the left-hand side of my ruler. So I place the ruler down, and you might be able to see I drew some lines already on my quilt top. This is using a water-soluble marker. You could also use handy pencil or any kind of a marking tool that you want. And go ahead and mark those out, but make sure you test it first on your fabric, okay? So back to this ruler. I'm going to line it up, and my hopping foot is going to be, or actually, sorry, the needle will be a quarter of an inch from the ruler. The hopping foot will hug right up against this ruler. And so I want to position my ruler so that it is a quarter of an inch away from my marked line. And same with my top. So you'll notice I'm not using these grid lines to line it up straight, I'm on an angle. So I'm lining it up quarter of an inch from here and a quarter of an inch from this marked line. I'm going to stitch up, pause with my needle in the down position, and I'm going to rotate the ruler around, hugging it up against my foot, and then I'm going to rotate this ruler until this part is a quarter of an inch away from my marked line, and then stitch it down, pausing, and again, same thing, hug it up against the foot, rotate it until I've got it a quarter of an inch and continue around. So that's a fun design to play with. Let me show you some stitching with this ruler. So we're going to bring this machine over. And I'm wanting to start right on this seam. So I'm going to find the position I want to start on, bring up my bobbin thread. I'm going to do a little tie off. Now I'm going to put the ruler in position, hugging it up against my foot. And then on this side, I'm going to use my grid lines and make sure that my grid lines are even with my seam. Okay. You might have noticed that I already have handy grip on this ruler to help hold it in position. So as I start stitching, the ruler is not going to shift. 
I'm taking my time slowly, especially around those curves. And I like to pause up at the top, reposition my hand. I don't want to have my hand on this side of the ruler when I'm stitching over here because I don't have that control. So I'm going to shift my hand over, stitching down, and I'm going to walk my hand over also right here. So I've got complete control as I'm stitching. My low bobbin has been detected. We're going to leave that low bobbin and keep stitching. So I'm going to keep my needle in the down position, rotate my ruler, or shift my ruler over, again lining up on that seam line with the grid marks, holding the ruler, three point pressure, up I go slowly around these curves, pausing at the point, I'm going to shift my hand. If you are a beginner ruler, or a beginner with using rulers, I do recommend always stopping with the needle in the down position and always stopping anytime you need to shift your hand. So once you've had a little bit more experience, sometimes you can shift your hand a little bit while you're going. So let's go ahead and we're going to shift one more time, lining it up, and we're going to stitch. Hugging that ruler on those curves. Okay, so that is our pointed arc template. It's a lot of fun, and you can come up with so many different designs for this ruler. Have fun quilting. Yeah. All right. The, uh, yeah, we wanted to talk about that. That's the arc A templates that I was using. And of course, you could use, like she said, Flip side. The flip side or the curved or cross the curved hatch. Cross hatch. So those are some of our favorite rulers. All right. Is that all you want to talk about? Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you'll like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Also follow us on Instagram and Facebook and have fun quilting this week.